Good morning and welcome to worship with the congregation of the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel. I am so glad you can be with us, whether you are out in Zoom world or here in the chapel with us. On this, the Sunday of the Transfiguration of Jesus, the last Sunday after Epiphany, on Wednesday we begin Lent. So we get, we're starting to get ready for Lent today, and we will talk about that more as we go through worship. If you are out in Zoom world, you see the um, bulletin on your screen, and it will keep scrolling along as we go through worship so that you can continue to follow along with it. We invite you to read aloud the lines that are in bold print and sing along with the songs, even though you are muted, so that you can be taking part with all the rest of us. If you're out in Zoom world, you can't come up to the offering plate at um, offertory time, but you can make use of the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, Mobile Faith Engagement app. Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement. If you put that into your um, desktop's browser or if you put it into your phone's app store, it will show you the app, which is a free download, very safe, um, run by nice Presbyterian people. And um, that, will, they, that you can then use, you enter Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel, and it will get you all set up to give electronically. If you'd like to be a little more old school, um, you can write a check and put it in an envelope and send it to 1212 Livingston Avenue in North Brunswick, 08902. Um, but the Postal Service will charge you for that privilege. So all of those things are part of that. Children are encouraged to have paper and pencils or crayons ready for drawing during the sermon. And if you just feel young at heart and want to be drawing during the sermon, nobody will tell on you. So that's just fine. I think that's all the things we need to talk about to get ready for starting worship today. So I'm going to ask Chris to play through the gathering song and then we'll all sing it a couple of times. And the second time I'll invite people here in the chapel to um, stand if, as they are able. worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We're not immortal. We age and weaken and die. The God of gods, our God, speaks and calls out the earth from the rising of the sun until its setting. Chris is going to play through the psalm and then we'll all sing. Mighty God with power speaks and all the world obeys. From dawn until the setting sun, God's wonder earth displays. 
the perfect beauty all around from Zion's height shines forth and stars across the firmament so brightly beam their worth. God comes not with a silent form but riding on the winds. Before God's face the raging storm its blast of thunder sends. All hail the judge in bold array whose promise is to bless. Who sees our sin yet also feels our thirst for righteousness. The hands declare your justice, Lord, as endless as the sky. Against the taunts of disbelief, our God will testify. Receive my heartfelt gift of thanks as honor to your mind. Refresh my faith with each new day. Protect me through the night. Beloved in Christ, may God's amazing grace be with you. May God's robust peace be yours. Please be seated for prayer. And let us now confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven, living out the promise of Christ's baptism. Let us do all this beginning with the prayer you find on your screens and in your leaflets. Let us pray. When we allow darkness to overcome the light, forgive us, O Christ. Forgive us, o Christ. When, we when we reduce Christ's coming to plastic and tinsel, have mercy upon, have mercy us. upon us, Father. When hardness, when hardness of heart keeps us from seeing and hearing and touching, let your grace, let your grace consume us, Creator Spirit. When the wars around us are of no concern, Move us to compassion for those who suffer. When our caring is not extended to action, move us to seek justice for our brothers and sisters. We confess our sinfulness before you, before one another, and before all creation. We are but dust without your love, yet you take on our mortal clay to redeem us. Remove all the barriers that divide us, and let there be no obstacles to our love for you, for our neighbors, or for ourselves. Listen to these words we may trust from the Apostle Paul. Jesus' descent from David roots him in history. His unique identity as the Son of God was shown by the Spirit when Jesus was raised from the dead, setting him apart as, our, as the Messiah, our Master. We are who we are through this gift and call of Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus' name that we are forgiven. Glory to our God, glory from the heights, amen. Peace to everyone, showing God goodwill, amen. Utu kufu kwa mungu jua mina, amani kwa watu wa mungu, amina. Beloved in Christ, believe this good news and live in peace. Jesus calls us to love our enemies, 
to do good to those who persecute us, to pray for those who abuse us, to do to others as we would have them do to us. Indeed, our reward will be great, and we will be children of the Most High. We shall be merciful, just as our Father is merciful. And as we go forth living lives in peace, we hear also these words from Paul. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another with a hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ. 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 Peace of Christ, Lillian. Peace. Peace. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Oh, you missed a good meeting. We volunteered you for all sorts of things. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Glory to our God, glory from the heights, amen. Peace to everyone, showing God goodwill, amen. Utu kufu kwa mungu juwa mina, amani kwa watu wa mungu amina. And now we come to the time when we um, visit with the young children before Bible stories and sermons and all of those good things happen. Um, I told folks at the beginning of worship, today is the last Sunday after Epiphany and something we call the Sunday of the Transfiguration of Jesus. Transfiguration is a funny word. We don't use that word all the time. We don't use that word much at all. But if you look at that word in Greek, it comes from another word that sometimes we do use. We use it, usually, often it's, we use it in school and we use it when we're talking about butterflies a lot. The word is metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is, of course, what happens when you've got a little caterpillar. You know what a caterpillar looks like. And it makes itself a cocoon. And I'll bet some of you have done this at school already and watched them. They, be, they make themselves little cocoons and they sleep in those cocoons for a while and when they come out, they have great big beautiful wings and they're butterflies and they can fly away. That's called metamorphosis. It has to do with all that stuff that made the caterpillar into a butterfly was already in the caterpillar. It was there all along and people couldn't see it and then we get to see it. And what's going to happen in our story, we're going to talk about how all that stuff was in Jesus all along. And there's another story we're going to read right before that about Elisha and Elijah. Elijah was Elisha's teacher and they were prophets. And Elijah is getting ready to go to heaven. And Elisha is traveling with him and Elisha wants a portion of Elijah's spirit. And Elijah's going to tell him, well, the way you know you're going to, if you got it or not is whether you see what's going to happen to me. And there's going to be this really surprising thing that happens with Elijah. But all that stuff, again, was there all along. It's just that now Elisha could see it. And that was the spirit helping, helping him. So this is sort of happening for him. This is happening for Peter and James and John who are going to go with Jesus and you're going to hear what they see. But if that was there all along, then we have to think about, okay, did the change happen to Jesus? 
Or did the change happen to Peter and James and John? And is the change, is that change where we can see things that are there all along, something that happens to us because of the Holy Spirit? So I want you to think about that, and I want you to get ready for another part of worship today, because today is the last Sunday before Lent starts. And we're going to have this word we've got to pay attention to. Alleluia. We sang some alleluias at the beginning of worship. We've been doing that right along through Epiphany. And we're going to have some alleluias, a whole bunch of them in the prayers and in the last hymn at the end of worship. And then as we get ready for Lent, like we do every year, we're going to put the alleluias away. We're going to put them in this box. In some traditions, they call that burying the alleluias because they used to really dig a hole and take an hallelujah and put it in the hole and bury it. But we don't want to dig a, we've been working so hard on fixing the sanctuary up, we don't want to make a hole in the floor. So we're going to put it in that box and we're going to put them away and we won't have any hallelujahs in worship then until Easter. So we're getting ready for that, but we need them today because hallelujah means praise God. And so already we're doing things where we know God needs to be praised. But another way to think of Alleluia, because we could just say praise God, and sometimes we do. Alleluia is like saying, wow, in the middle of worship. And all of these things that we're going to hear and see, we're going to say, wow. And the grown-ups get to do something special today with worship because they get to help. If they look in their leaflets, they'll see they get to help with the scripture lesson. And they get to be the other prophets whom who Elisha and Elijah are going to see on the way to what happens in the first lesson. And then we'll have our wows, and then we'll put them away at the end of worship. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the end of worship. So when we, when we um, have Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer first. And at the end of the prayer, we always say amen. So... The grown-ups are going to help with the prayer, and then when we get to the end, I want you to say the amen really loud so we can hear you, okay? Let's pray. Oh God, God, in Christ you came to give us peace. Bring us peace now. In Christ you came to make us whole. Make us whole again. In Christ your word lived among us. Let your word live in us today. By your spirit come to us, and we all say... Amen. And grown-ups get ready to help as we listen for a word from God in this story from the second book of Kings. Just before God took Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on a walk out of Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as God lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The guild of prophets at Bethel came to Elisha and said, did you know that God is going to take your... This is the part where you're supposed to help grown-ups. How are you going to see the transfiguration if you can't even see the bulletin? Okay, we're going to try that again. The guild of prophets at Bethel came to Elijah and, Elisha and said, Did you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, he said. I know it. But keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. God has sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said, As God lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went to Jericho. The guild of prophets at Jericho came to Elisha and said, Did you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, he said. I know it. But keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. God has sent me on to the Jordan. But Elisha said, as God lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So both of them went, out, went on together. Fifty members of the group of prophets also went along, but they stood at a distance. While the two of them, 
Elijah and Elisha stood at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and hit the water with it. The water divided, and the two men walked through on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, What do you want me to do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Elijah said, you've made a difficult request. If you can see me when I'm taken from you, then it will be yours. If you don't see me, it won't happen. They were walking along, talking when suddenly a fiery chariot and fiery horses appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went to heaven in a windstorm. Elisha saw it all and shouted, My father, my father, you, the chariot and cavalry of Israel. When he could no longer see anything, he grabbed his robe and ripped it to pieces. Then Elisha picked up the coat that had fallen from Elijah. He went back and stood by the banks of the Jordan River and rolled it up. He took that coat and he hit the water. And he said, where is God, the God of Elijah? When he struck the water, the river divided. And Elisha walked through. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now listen for a word from God in this story from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus took Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah and Moses appeared, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. Let us make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice spoke from the cloud. This is my son, whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, He ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, but kept questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This is the word of God, we said, both times, both stories, both sets of awestruck followers. Both times, this is the word of God. In both stories, the followers stayed with their teachers. Elisha fought to be with Elijah. And Elisha's name, by the way, means... God lives. So when he says, as God lives, he was invoking his own name. And as you live, I won't leave you. Jesus wanted Peter, James, and John along with him. And when they got there, Peter volunteered unneeded help. It's lucky you've got us, Lord. We, you know, we could build you something. Both times, this is the word of God. In both stories, the followers see amazing things. Elisha sees the chariot and cavalry of Israel gather up Elijah into heaven. 
a sign that the spirit who had rested on Elijah now rested on Elisha. And Elisha was aware of it. The three disciples see Jesus changed from the inside out. As I told the children, this is what transfigured means. <laughs> Suggesting that all the glory, all that dialogue with law represented by Moses and prophecy represented by Elijah, all of that was there all along, happening all the time, and they just never saw it. Now we know that Elisha had been changed. We know that because we're told that he had received the spirit Elijah had. But if all of that glory in the gospel story was part of Jesus all along, for that's how he changed from the inside out, then perhaps Jesus didn't change so much as his followers changed. It was his followers who were transfigured there on the mountaintop. We start with seeing God's wonders, and then we change. In both stories, the followers, having been there in the presence of glory, go back to the world changed. Elisha takes up Elijah's mantle, his cloak, and picks up where Elijah left off, wielding his mentor's power, dividing that river. John, Peter, and James didn't yet take up where Jesus left off because Jesus hadn't left yet. But they were now thinking about a much larger reality than they had ever yet imagined. All of this rising from the dead. What's that mean? And this is the word of God. We said that both, we said that both, st both times. With both stories. So what about our story? We start with seeing God's wonders. Every day there are wonders. Others love us and we love them. We are, kept alive. we are kept alive. And we're kept alive driving in central New Jersey, which is a wonder all to itself. We hear God's word in new ways. We help others and we see Christ in their faces, whether we know it or not. In any number of ways, we are touched by God's Holy Spirit sharing grace. We may not be always be open to God's spirit, but when we are, we recognize small bits of the same glory that James, Elisha, Peter, and John all saw. Like those followers, we come down the mountain, back across the river, back to daily life. We start with seeing God's wonders. How will we be changed? Today, we will put away our hallelujahs. And Wednesday, we will enter the more somber season of Lent. Maybe this is where we'll be changed. Maybe instead of a fast to lose a few pounds or to be as sad as we think that Jesus was, we could try repentance, turning our lives around, that not only changes our lives, but changes the world. Maybe that spirit who touches our lives can be shared with others. Maybe we can't transform society, but maybe we can bring kindness and grace to those we meet. Maybe that will, in this day and age, be, com be comparable to fiery chariots and shimmering clothing, given how little anybody shares grace with each other anymore and how much they share anger and fear and hatred. Maybe we can just put the money that we save from giving up Starbucks for Lent 
into our one great hour of sharing offering. Maybe this can be our story. Sharing the transfiguration that we've seen, that we've experienced, that we've gone through. So others can be changed. And this, in our lives, will be the word of God. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing. affirm our faith using the words from Paul's letter to the Philippians that we find on our screens and in our leaflets. Let us say together what we believe. Christ was truly God, but he did not try to remain equal with God. Instead, he gave up everything and became a slave, became like one of us. And when he found himself like one of us, he humbled himself even further by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave Christ a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Please be seated. 
Again, I welcome everybody to worship, and as we continue now into our time of sharing offerings and then sharing our prayers, we will get ready to share our joys and concerns. If you are out in Zoom world and have joys and concerns to share, we invite you to unmute your phones or whatever your, you know, whatever device you're using. If um, you're using a regular old dumb phone and don't have a screen with a little icon on it, then you unmute by pressing star six, and that will um, get you into, into the conversation. And while we're all doing that, I'm going to point out just a few things that are going on in the next few weeks. As I said, As I said Wednesday is not only Valentine's Day, it is also Ash Wednesday. And so we begin our, ta our Lenten journey by remembering the love of God as we remember our love for each other. There will be a brief worship for Ash Wednesday here at Peace Chapel at noontime on Wednesday. It's going to be really short. It should just be 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so everyone is welcome. You are welcome to bring friends if you'd like. If you can't be here, we plan, I plan to have the, the Zoom set up. It may not do a lot of fancy things, but it'll at least be working. And um, we'll be able to share. This is what's going on. And you'll be able to watch from wherever you are using the usual link. So we'll do that. Then next Sunday will be the first Sunday in Lent, and we'll be in worship the way we usually are. You'll see an announcement in the bulletin about wearing blue shirts next Sunday, which is to help remember, um, remember the work of one particular Presbyterian mission, and I'm going to look. Oh, yes, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Fund. Yes. And so we'll wear our blue shirts, and this is part of our preparation for one great hour of sharing at Easter time. So I invite you to do that. Wear, wear a blue shirt. It doesn't have to be a t-shirt, it just has to be a shirt. Um, and hopefully have lots of blue in, in worship next Sunday. And then after worship, the session has their February meeting, and session members whose terms are completing and session members whose terms are beginning are all welcome to be present for that so that we can begin to transition and make plans for um, installing and ordaining elders very soon and do lots of other good things as we get ready for the year to continue and moving up towards Easter. And then on February 24th will be our mission partnership work with Bayard Street Presbyterian Church down at Bayard Street, distributing food. This month we are collecting beans, um, canned beans, so bring them on in every Sunday, um, or do like Pastor James and bring four cans all at once because he knows he's not going to remember four Sundays in a row, um, and just do that. Um, if you've got other non-perishable foods to bring instead, bring those those are, it's all still good. So all of that is coming as we get ready and as Lent begins. Now, do we have anybody we need to be remembering, especially in our prayers this week? Helen, hang on, Helen. Yes, could we keep in our prayers, Mimi and her grandchildren. We found this week that she has to be out of this temporary housing in April. So that's in like six weeks. So uh, she's like 130th on a waiting list for housing, which probably isn't possible. So let's just keep that family in prayer. I don't know what God's answer is. Okay, so let's keep Mimi and her grandchildren in prayer. Um, and if anybody hears about some other sources of affordable housing, um, give me a call or give Helen a call and we'll get that information to Mimi and we'll see if we can help her out and get that settled. 
Anybody else? Barbara. Barbara. Well, prayers continue for Carol, and I think she's still dealing with some pain and not feeling too awfully perky yet. Okay, so yes, Carol is still recovering from her hip surgery, and so let's continue to keep her in prayers as she works with physical therapy and does all the things she has to do to get moving and to get past the time of pain to where things really feel better. Who's next? Sam. Prayers to God for peace on the, on the planet. Yes, prayers for peace. We have more than enough violence and war going on. Zach. On the 13th, it's our mother's birthday, so. So it was, it's coming up on Tuesday. Tuesday the 13th. Yeah. So we can, we, can wish, we can wish Beatrice a happy birthday, but by our rules, we don't get to publicly embarrass her today. <laughs> now, if we want to privately embarrass her at the, after worship when the recordings have stopped, well, that's a whole other thing. But we're thankful for Beatrice and the gift of her life. Hi, Pastor James. It's Rita. Okay. Hi, Rita. Yes. Hi. Um, greetings to everybody. Um, Ellie and I are out here in Austin, Texas, and we'll be returning today. So prayers of um, safe travels back to New Jersey. Okay. Rita and Ellie are in Austin, Texas, and... Um, are in worship and they are at least an hour behind us so they got up early today yeah. um, but they're traveling home after after this so prayers for them to have safe travel and for everybody who's traveling at this time of year to be traveling safely anybody else pastor james continued prayers for healing for my brother john Ah, yes. And continued prayers for the caregivers. So continued prayers for John to continue healing. He's still at the hospital? He is. He is. Okay. And continued prayers for the caregivers there. Okay. Anybody else? Martha. Martha. Um, um, the thoughts I was having before worship this morning were similar to what you presented in your message this morning, that um, what we need, we already have. It, it's, we allow ourselves to be transformed. Um, there's, in a way, that's a, a source of commerce, that we have something, we trade it in for something else. But the, thoughts I was having was that when we pray to God, we, um, we bring him our problems, we bring him our requests, we bring him praise and hopefully thanksgiving for him, thankfulness, and uh, many thanks. Um, but what we get back is his grace, and we give him our lives, and in return, we get eternity. So we are definitely the ones who, <laughs> so to speak, make out better in that deal. <laughs> um, it's, and it, so often we pray for our heart's desires. But sometimes our heart's desires are really only band-aids that camouflage what our true heart desire is that we may not even be aware of. And so we might think that God's not answering our prayer, but in his giving us what we need, or maybe what we don't even know that we really want, he does know our heart's desires and does 
does give that to us. And for that, we are very thankful. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Martha. Yes. And sometimes God gives even before we know we're supposed to be asking, which is wonderful. I'd yes, like Gabe. to have a prayer of thanks for Lawrence for the uh, metamorphosis of this building. It, it, it's been a great, great uh, task for him under duration, very dire tri times with uh, Bassey being ill and prayers for him, Bassey and uh, Cornelia. Okay, yes, prayers for him and Cornelia and for Yasmin and Bassey. And yes, thanksgiving for all that Lawrence has done as we are still in the final, the final steps. Things are still having to happen and he's chasing after, um, chasing after various contractors constantly and getting after them about what they need to do. So let's continue to keep him in prayers and thank God for him and keep them all in prayers as they keep waiting for um, Bassie's healing. Okay, Helen. Oh, yes. Okay, keep reminding me and we'll keep remembering. Yes, prayers for O'Neilly and for Econ who waits with him and they go week by week waiting. Okay. Hear these words from the letter to the Hebrews. Do good and share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and offerings from our life and our labor unto our God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. <laughs> we have gathered in your presence once again, O God, like your apostles on the mountain, in a place that is both familiar and frightening. Your word has been revealed to us, and if our eyes and hearts have been open enough, 
we have seen your glory and we respond with praise and wonder. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Here in your presence, like your apostles on the mountain, we find our minds drawn to the world around us. Chores we left behind at home. Plans for later today. News from near and far that makes us anxious. And so we pray for our world and for all the people in it, especially those in places of conflict or danger this day, the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia, people of Gaza and Israel, of Jordan and Syria and Sudan and Iraq and Iran and Lebanon and Yemen all drawn into conflict. People who are refugees in so many places around the world, oh God, fleeing war, fleeing violence, fleeing disaster, not knowing where their home will be, not knowing how they will be safe, but trusting. And so we pray for those women and men who lay down their lives for the safety of those brothers and sisters and neighbors, wherever they might be. And we pray for for those who lead us, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world that whether they profess your name or not, they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. And we pray that they may all see your glory and with us respond with praise and wonder. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Here in your presence, like your apostles on the mountain, we think about those who have trouble feeling your presence. Those who are frightened, abandoned, imprisoned, hungry, or hopeless. Those struggling with poverty, loss, illness, or infirmity. And we pray for them, each and all for Mimi and her grandchildren who need a permanent place to live. For Carol, Carol, still recovering. For For Rita and Ellie, that they may be brought home safely. For John in the hospital, that he may be healed. For Bassie Bassie. and for Lawrence, Cornelia and Yasmin taking care of her. For O'Neilly. for all those whose names we remember in our hearts and those whose names we don't know yet. And we pray that we may show them your glory in our compassion and give them voice to respond with praise and wonder. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Here in your presence, like your apostles on the mountain, we find ourselves tempted to stay and bask in the glory. In fact, we are worried that we cannot face the world's push and pull. And so we pray for ourselves, gathered to be your holy church. For this congregation gathered here, for those you've called to be the elders among us, especially for Lawrence as he shepherds us through this process of making this into a home and a ministry to all the community. For our brothers and sisters in and around North and New Brunswick, 
for the churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries. And we pray for all those who proclaim your good news wherever they might be. Pray that despite our weaknesses, our fears, our stubbornness, you might still work in and through us, that the world may see your glory, and that we might all respond with praise and wonder. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Send us out, O oh God, back into the world, made in your image, and ever present in us, with us, among us by your spirit, and ever aware of the glory of your word. Glory you have shown us, glory that inspires us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kind is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing. So we take our symbolic alleluia and we take all these alleluias we've been saying and singing and sharing and we put them away and we take our box and we put it up here out of the way but always visible to remind us that during this Lenten season we are quieter we are more somber and we are getting ready for those alleluias to return as we celebrate Christ's rising. Now listen for a word from God in this portion of the gospel according to Mark. From there, Jesus and his followers went through Galilee, but he didn't want anyone to know it. This was because he was teaching his disciples, the Son of Man will be delivered into human hands. They will kill him. Three days after he is killed, he will rise up. Let us pray. Now we go from awe to one and wonder to a difficult journey with a great promise. Now we set aside our alleluias, taking up the way of Christ and his cross. Now our walk becomes somber, yet filled with love and wonder of Christ, who never leaves us. Now we leave behind our jubilation, 
for all in the presence of God's grace, knowing that with Christ's rising, our praises will rise again. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And let us all of us together say, Amen. Amen.